Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to take our wooden floor material from the last tutorial and add in some surface imperfections, namely some smudges and scratches, to give our floor a more realistic, lived in feel. First, though, let's take a look at the files we'll need during this video. We're going to need floor smudges type A medium 001, which is a bit of a mouthful, and gun scratches 003. Both of these I already have saved to my hard drive, and I'll include a link to them below this video. Okay, let's head over to Cinema 4D. Okay, so this was our finished result from last time. If you'll remember, we uh, got the material converter to do the majority of the work for us. It brought in uh, all the textures and whatnot. All we did was make a slight adjustment to the gloss map to make our floor look a little shinier. And it's actually that gloss map that we're going to be working with today. But before we get started, I want to go over exactly what it is we're about to do. To add the smudges, we're going to take our original gloss map, where the brighter areas are more shiny, more reflective, and the darker areas are more rough and diffuse, um, and then we're going to bring in our smudges texture. Now we'll be taking the information from the smudges texture, taking the brighter areas, and then subtracting that information away from our uh, gloss map. This will um, mean that where there's smudges on the floor, the that there will be less reflectivity, less shininess, um, which will give us exactly the effect that we want. Uh, and then finally, when we have our combined uh, gloss map, we'll feed that back into our shader. Okay, so let's get to work. Let's go back into our material. There we go. And, nope. There we go. Um, over to the reflection tab once again. Okay, so scroll down until you get to the glossiness value, and then before this gloss adjust, let's add in a layer shader. And then within that layer shader is now our, our gloss adjust that we made last time, but the layer shader will give us more control over what we can do. So let's name this uh, gloss layer. Here we go. And now we can add in addi additional stuff, but you can still go into that gloss adjust and still affect the, the strength of the gloss map like we did last time. So all of that's been preserved, we're just going to build on it. Okay, so click on Shader, and then go down to Corona, and then a Corona Bitmap. And we'll name this uh, Smudges, and then edit it, and this will allow us to bring in our Smudges texture. So when you load up the Smudges, you'll see uh, a few different options. You've got some white uh, smudges on a black background but also some black ones on a white background and it's that one that we're going to use because it's it's easier when working with a gloss map if you're working with a roughness map you'd, you'd use one of the other ones anyway get that loaded in like so um, and then we need to change the color profile here to linear now as a general rule if a texture contributes to the color of a material like obviously the color texture <laughs> but also the reflection texture um, you would set this to sRGB. You want the renderer to apply any gamma corrections that it's doing to those textures. Whereas if it's a texture that does not truck, uh, does not contribute to the color of the texture, like a gloss map or an overlay like this or a displacement map, etc., you would set it to linear because you don't want any gamma corrections applied. You want the, the raw data from that texture. So yeah, that's why we're doing that. Right, let's go back to our layer shader. And what we're going to do is set this to multiply. Multiply is a really good mix type for taking the dark areas of a texture and overlaying them on top of another texture. So if I were to lower this to say zero, you'll see our smudges are completely gone and we're just seeing our original gloss map. If we rise that to say 50%, we'd get a little bit of effect. And then if we leave it on the default, we get the full effect. So let's hit render with the full effects and see what we uh, see what we're getting. Yeah, so clearly that's working. <laughs> um, definitely too strong though, so we will be scaling that down quite a bit, uh, probably about fifty percent or so. Um, scaling wise, I actually think that works pretty well, so we'll leave that as is. Yeah. Okay. So let's close that down and lower this to say fifty. 45%, something like that. Try and remember this is this has got to be a really subtle effect. We're not we don't want we're not aiming for a dirty floor. Yeah, we're just aiming for a floor that looks like it's been used. And yeah, it's even that is possibly a little too strong. I would say. 
but we'll leave it at that for now because it is just a tutorial after all I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the tweaking to you okay so the next thing we need to do is add in some scratches so we're gonna go back to our base material and we're going to be looking inside the bump node okay now within the bump node we have let's go into the normal map and thankfully Corona is really handy because it gives you this additional bump mapping. So up here are all the settings for the normal texture and the, the material converter's done this. It's brought in the normal map and we don't need to touch that at all. So that's good. But under additional bump mapping, that allows us to bring in another texture. So let's click on this and find my gun scratches. There they are. Now, like before, we have a few different choices. We've got displacement maps, normal maps, and overlays. Now, the one I'm going to pick is this overlay variation two. With a bump map, the brighter areas of a map will count as um, an, an increase in height and the darker areas will be a decrease in height. Now, we obviously don't want our scratches to bump out of the floor, we want them to cut into it. So the best map for that would be a white map with a black uh, with black scratches. So that's the one I'm going to pick. Um, you could easily pick a black, uh, white scratches on a black background and invert it though. Um, that's that's another perfectly valid option if, if that type of texture isn't available. But let's, let's make it easy and uh, just go for that one. So yeah, let's hit render and see what we get. Not bad at all. Again, the scaling's looking pretty good. It's just the uh, the strength we need to adjust. But we can definitely see we've got the scratches going in the right direction. They're clearly cutting into the floor, which is good. So, let's close that down and adjust the strength to something like 5%, I would have thought. Again, really subtle effect. We're not looking for a scratched up, grimy, dirty floor here, just one that looks like it's been used. Yeah, the, the scratches are fine now, I would say. The smudges definitely need to come down some more. Um, in fact, I, I, can't, I can't finish this uh, without doing that. <laughs> My... Uh, I couldn't forgive myself if I did. So let's go back down to that layer. There we are. And lower this to something like, I don't know, 20% should be fine. Yeah, that's a bit more like it. So nice subtle smudges and scratches, which is exactly what we're after. Um, and I would say, at least for the purposes of a tutorial, that will, uh, that will do nicely. So in summary, we've taken our wooden floor material from the previous video and added in some smudges and scratches to give our floor a more realistic, lived-in feel. 